Welcome to the Soviet Union. No, not that Soviet Union. This Soviet Union. The Soviet Union that exists in the video game universe of Atomic Heart. Here, the Soviet Union emerges from World War II as an economic and technological marvel. The working class were liberated from their chains, just as philosopher Karl Marx had foretold a century earlier. The political philosophy of Marxist-Leninism ushers in a golden age of abundance and equality that propels the USSR far ahead of its rivals in the capitalist West. In the realm of video gaming, few titles have stirred as much controversy as the 2023 release, Atomic Heart. Developed by Mundfish, a Cyprus-based company led by a global team with Russian origins, the game takes us into an alternate reality, 1950s Soviet society. Atomic Heart weaves a tale of violent robots and a society lost in its own past. Lauded for its unique fusion of the Soviet-era setting, fantasy, and sci-fi elements, Atomic Heart was set to break new ground in the gaming industry. Yet, when it released, it made headlines not for its gameplay or unique setting, but for the storm of controversy it stirred. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, there's been a renewed focus on Russia's attempts to resurrect a lot of the old Soviet iconography. In recent years, Soviet symbols have began reappearing all across Russia in schools and public events, in what many claim is a clear attempt to glorify the Soviet past. However, for many of the Soviet Union's former citizens, the hammer and sickle represents a dark chapter in their history that few would like to return to. Unsurprisingly, many people have begun to question the true origins of Atomic Heart, and whether or not the creators of the game had nefarious intentions beyond making a game that fans would love. Proponents defended the game, seeing it as an exploration of dark themes and complex narrative elements. They argued that gaming, like any other form of art, is a medium for expressing and exploring a diverse range of human experiences, however disturbing they may be. The game first raised eyebrows with the inclusion of a Soviet-era cartoon, New Pagodi, playing on TVs in the save rooms. Critics point to a scene showing a racially stereotyped African tribal man, a common feature in TV shows of the era, which has caused some significant backlash. Mundfish promptly responded with an apology and a commitment to replace the clip, but the echoes of the controversy remain. Further controversy erupted after the development team's launch event for the game. The event included a dinner in a large banquet hall, where people cosplaying robots from the game, circled between tables and Soviet-era slogans, adorned the walls and stage. However, some people started questioning whether it was appropriate to hold a Soviet-style event promoting the game when Russia is still attacking and waging war against Ukraine. Some critics, including Remedy lead gameplay designer Sergei Mohov, also accused Atomic Heart and its developer Mundfish of being nostalgic about the Soviet regime, or even glorifying it. One Russian-speaking user called the presentation a feast in time of plague, adding that the event for the game about the Sovok, Russian slang term for the Soviet Union, coincided with the adoption of the anti-LGBT law in Russia, which brings us back to this very Sovok. Others drew parallels between Atomic Heart and another historical sci-fi classic, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein takes players through a fictionalized version of the Third Reich and features a lot of imagery from the period. Some wondered what the reaction would be if the developers of Wolfenstein had chosen to host a Nazi-themed launch party. The concerns surrounding Atomic Heart extend beyond mere game content. Players have raised accusations that the development team is collecting user data for the Russian government. Mundfish has assured gamers that no data collection occurs in-game or on their website, but that hasn't quelled the worries for many. Amidst this controversy, another potential issue emerged. The game's alleged ties to influential Russian sources. Mundfish, despite being headquartered in Cyprus, is primarily composed of Russian team members and has been associated with Russian business mailing addresses. This, along with the vagueness of their comments on the ongoing war in Ukraine, led to increased scrutiny from the gaming community. The ties to Russian investor Gem Capital, whose founder, Anatoly Pali, was an executive for the Russian state-owned energy company Gazprom, further stoked the fires of speculation, leading to protests and boycotts against Atomic Heart. The controversies swirling around Atomic Heart have not been without financial repercussions. Major game distribution platforms have found themselves in the crossfire 
as many users have demanded the removal of the game from stores. Even GOG.com, a popular digital platform, faced a petition with over 10,000 signatures calling for Atomic Heart's removal. Despite such public outcry, the platforms have been hesitant to take such drastic actions. The game remains in their libraries, testament to the delicate balance these platforms must maintain between social responsibility and commercial interests. Amidst this tug of war, Atomic Heart continues to be a hot commodity, selling over 5 million copies since its launch on January 15, 2023, highlighting the complex relationship between consumer choices, company ethics, and product value. The saga of Atomic Heart does not exist in a vacuum. In fact, it resonates with the ghosts of previous controversies that have dotted the gaming landscape. To understand the current predicament better, it's instructive to look at some past scenarios. The banning of Rockstar's Manhunt 2 in 2007 and the massive outcry against Blizzard's Hong Kong incident in 2019 both show how ethical and political considerations can influence the gaming world. These precedents reveal that both consumers and game creators share the responsibility for navigating ethical complexities in gaming. They serve as sobering reminders of how games, often seen as escapes from reality, can become focal points for real-world issues. By examining these historical cases, we may gain a clearer perspective on the ongoing Atomic Heart controversy and its potential long-term implications for the gaming industry. One cannot discuss the Atomic Heart controversy without touching upon the delicate question of censorship. Renowned gaming critics and analysts have voiced their thoughts, lending a nuanced perspective to this issue. On one side, critics highlight the importance of artistic expression. Games, like any art form, should be an avenue for exploring complex ideas and themes. The argument goes, taking such actions might lead to a troubling precedent of suppressing creative voices. On the other side, critics voice concern about the apparent normalization of violence and degradation in Atomic Heart. They argue that the explicit content and the potential for it to be misunderstood, or worse emulated, raises alarm bells about its social impact. As the dust settles on the Atomic Heart controversy, questions remain about what the future holds. The gaming industry, in its ever-evolving nature, is bound to encounter similar challenges down the road. The lessons from this controversy will no doubt shape the strategies developers, distributors, and consumers employ in the future. Will we see a more cautious approach by developers, mindful of the potential backlash? Or will controversies such as this embolden artists to push the boundaries of societal norms? Only time will tell. Regardless, Atomic Heart serves as a poignant case study of the intersections between art, politics and ethics in the digital age. Before we end this deep dive into Atomic Heart's controversy, we invite you, our viewers, to share your thoughts. Given everything we've discussed, do you think it was right to keep Atomic Heart available for purchase despite the outcry? What lessons should the gaming industry take from this incident? We look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Red Watch TV. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and we look forward to seeing you next time.